and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in today's video, we are talking about 10 reasons not to buy a Russian toy. So if you didn't know, my dog is a Russian toy and today I wanted to just shed some light on why I don't think you should get one. And the reason I wanted to do this video is because I've seen the breed getting increasingly popular and I've also had a lot of questions asking about why I don't want to get a second one. So reason number one. They're very small and in some instances can be very fragile due to their light frame. And this can actually be very difficult in some situations. Uh, one situation, for example, is my best friend has a German Shepherd and oftentimes we don't meet together with both of our dogs. And the reason for that is just that Nemo is just super small and her dog is very big and she doesn't really know her own size so they try to play but she's so big that it doesn't really work out very well and the dogs just end up being very frustrated when they don't get to play. Number two, it's a big dog in a very small package and you cannot expect a sofa dog that's just satisfied with being at home and waiting on you the whole day. This of course varies in dog to dog, but honestly I feel like Russian toys are very much more active than other tiny dog breeds. Number three is that they live a very long time and can get very old. So if you're not ready for a commitment like 17, 18 years or sometimes longer, maybe you should choose to get a different breed. Number four. This also varies a lot from dog to dog, but they do have a very high prey drive. Nemo has quite an insane prey drive and especially when it comes to cats, he loves to hunt cats and forgets that he has ears when he sees them. Nemo also has hunted and actually killed a mouse when we were at my grandparents' house. So they do have a, lot, a very big prey drive and this can sometimes make it a bit more difficult to have them off leash, especially in the forest. Is the number five, that they are very barky and their bark is very loud. Of course, the Russian toy was used in the Russian household, uh, like high society household as living alarm bells. So basically they would have like 15, 20 Russian toys and a big Russian terrier, uh, which is a large black dog. I'll put a picture here. And the Russian toys were basically living alarms, just alarming when they heard something and a different noise. And then they were called back and they let the big dog out to finish what the small dogs had started. And of course this is quite trainable but you have to be aware that they are very barky and that they usually their response to situations is to bark. Uh, for instance, when the doorbell rings or if they see something scary outside, they are gonna bark. So if you're not ready for training really a lot with a barky dog, then maybe this is not the breed for you. If you aren't ready to see all bigger dogs as a potential deathly threat because of the big size difference, then I wouldn't say Russian toys are for you. And I have been told when I told a lady off who had a very big dog off leash that I was being very overly dramatic. Uh, but the fact is that one paw wrong can very easily end my dog's life. And if you your big dog just in a play puts a big paw on Nemo's back, he would break and he would die. And sadly, that is just the truth. Um, I know of people who have Russian toys with bigger dogs, but usually this is very highly trained from both dogs' perspective, meaning that the big dogs really know the boundaries with the small ones and the small ones don't do anything to provoke the bigger ones. This is something I'm really considering when looking at getting a second dog, which I never thought was really gonna be a problem, but I've realized it can actually be a huge problem, especially with leaving them alone at home. And I wouldn't do that, honestly, if I had a big dog and a small dog, I wouldn't leave them at home together. I probably wouldn't just separate also with like a gate, but I would rather separate actually into different rooms or parts of my house. 
Um, I think it's also very important to put very clear boundaries on like you can't play inside and that's just like how it has to be because you cannot check it non-stop but you have to be really aware that this is a huge risk and also outside is a huge risk um, and you have to be aware that you cannot let them really play with bigger dogs in like dog parks and stuff like that if you want because it can go wrong really really fast number seven is actually that if you don't want a very smart breed uh, then you shouldn't choose a Russian toy because sometimes they train you and you have to realize when that is happening and to be aware that that can actually happen. Uh, <laughs> they're very smart and they need a lot of mental stimulation to live a healthy and perfect peaceful everyday life. Um, so if you don't want something smart then maybe this is not for you. Number eight that if you have a need for a personal space sometimes then this is not really the breed for you because a russian toy would rather be inside your skin than not be beside you they're very clingy dogs and they like to be next to you and be close to you Nemo is literally down here as we speak and if you don't like that then maybe it's not for you number nine Russian toys are not an easy dog. I've met a lot of different dog breeds through my life and I've also trained and dealt with a lot of different breeds and Russians aren't easy. Uh, they are in their heart and in their core a terrier, uh, which means that they are much harder maybe in some instances like as, as your average dog. There's a lot of terrier in them, there's a lot of opinions. And I also know of this breeder who used to have Russian toys but has Australian Kelpies now. And she says that her Kelpies are much easier than her Russian toys ever were. And so number 10, which I would really never get a Russian toy again. And it's sadly people's opinions. I cannot tell you how many times per day people do things to me and to my dog that is just so annoying that I... I literally want to literally that are just so annoying in everyday life people comment people point people kissy noise towards him people tell me their opinion or that he's shaking or that he shouldn't be wearing clothes or that he should be wearing clothes or why is he walking like people are constantly having opinions and since I've never owned a different dog before I don't know if this happens to everyone but this happens a lot to us I also want to put out there that as far as I know, Nemo is the only Russian toy in Bosnia. So um, of course it's a lot harder when they have literally never seen this breed of dog before. Uh, but for me, it's just constantly very annoying. And I really want a dog that's focused on me and that we are in our own little bubble. And it's constantly hard when people are trying to burst the bubble by always commenting or giving their opinions. I've also sadly had a lot of opinions, bad opinions from social media and also good opinions. But for instance, I've gotten bad comments on YouTube videos when we're training agility and things like that just because of his size and for what breed he is. So those are 10 reasons why you should not get a Russian toy. So I don't know if this is good enough to convince you that this is not the breed for you. But if you're still intrigued, I will link in the description the video that I did about Russian toys where I say mostly positive things about the breed and why I love them and why I got one in the first place. So the video is going to be done there. And if you like this video, then please give it a like and comment something fun down below and maybe subscribe. I don't know why not it's very fun and I love to do this for you guys so that is it for today's video and I hope I see you in the next one bye <laughs>